as the retain includes the design of uh, pavement retaining walls but how do you actually enter the information in the program how do you check the results how do you optimize the design to get the most efficient structure and still complying with all the code requirements this is javier encinas and today we're going to design completely from scratch a basement retaining wall example this basement wall is a 10 feet concrete stem it's adjacent to the road so the surcharge of 250 psf is applicable there the backfill properties is density 120 pcf and the fee the internal friction angle is 26 degrees the concrete f prime c is 4 ksi and fy is 60 ksi in addition to the backfill and the surcharge this wall will be subject to a dead load of 7 kip per foot and a live load of 5 kip per foot from the second floor slab and from the upper uh, levels in the structure. This uh, concentrated load is concentric in the stem of the wall. If necessary, the slab on grade at the bottom of the basement can be used to restrain laterally the wall so the sliding can be prevented. Finally, the allowable bearing pressure is 4 KSF. So let's model this basement wall in ASDIP Retain. Let's go there. When you open ASDIP Retain, you see the project manager. Here you can see the modules included in the package, cantilever retaining walls, counter forward retaining walls, basement retaining walls, and sheet piling. In this case, we're gonna create a calculation for a basement retaining wall. Click on this button. Let's assign a name. Let's call it example add. Then this calculation has been added to the tree. To open the calculation, double click on the tree. And this is a template for a basement retaining wall in ASDIP Retain. In the left pane, you enter the information, is the input. In the right pane, you can see the results. The geometry tab, we will enter the geometric information given in the statement of the problem. We know the stem material is concrete, could be also be masonry. In this example, it's gonna be concrete. The stem height, we know that it's 10 feet. Let's say that the stem thickness is, for now, 10 inches. We can reduce it if necessary later. Go to the footing tab. Let's say that the footing thickness is 12 inches. For now, let's assume that the toe is two feet long and also that the heel is two feet long. We don't need a shear key, so let's specify key depth zero. Let's go to the backfill and cover. The soil cover is one foot. The backfill height is 10 feet and the slope is zero degrees. In base fixity, let's assume that the bottom is pin. Here we enter all the load that we know will be applied to this wall. The backfill density, 120, saturated 130. In this case, it's a restrained wall at the top. So let's use the addressed earth pressure theory. Internal friction angle is 26 degrees. Let's assume that the backfill is well drained and the water table is zero in this case. Also, we know that the surcharge charge is 250 live. And we also have a couple of concentrated loads. We know that the vertical load is seven keeper foot and the live load is five keeper foot. We don't have any wind. We don't have any seismic load either. So we have completed all the information given in the statement of the problem. If we click on the graph tab, we can see the wall that we just modeled in this example. Now the idea is to optimize the design. So to reduce the dimensions as much as possible and still complying with all the code uh, provisions. We go to the at a glance tab. Here we can see a summary of the results in just one screen. We can see a couple of deficiencies here. Let's focus first on the bearing pressures is 4.5, so it's over the allowable 4.0. Graphically, let's go to graph, then the bearing tab. Here we can see the bearing diagram. So the maximum occurs at the heel end, 4.5. How can we reduce that? Let's go to geometry, then the footing tab. Here in the dimensions of the toe and the heel, so for example, if we increase to 2.5, the heel, is 3.7 now, it's okay. Let's try to reduce the other one to 1.8. It's 
3.5 and 3.4, so we need to reduce a little bit 2.0, increase it to 2.2. Now we are perfect, we are less than 4.0 with these dimensions of the footing. So the toe is 1.8, the heel is 2.2 and the maximum bearing pressure is 3.9. Let's go to our glance again. So this issue has been, has been solved, has been fixed. In addition to stability, the sliding safety factor is 1.53, which is more than 1.5. It's acceptable the way it is. Now let's focus on the thicknesses of the members. These are the shear ratios. The shear ratio for stem is 0.65, that means that we can improve it. Let's go to the stem tab in geometry. The stem thickness instead of 10, let's say 9. Now the shear ratio is 0.72, we can improve it a little bit more, let's say 8 inches thick. Now the ratio is 0.82. For now let's assume that the thickness of the footing is okay, 12 inches. Go to the reinforcement design. At the left, let's go to the reinforcement tab. And at the right, let's go to the graph tab, then construction tab. Here we can see the rebars. Obviously, we don't need a double layer of rebars in the stem. So we uncheck this checkbox here. And now it's only one layer of rebars in the stem, located at the front face. Let's go to our glance tab to see the ratios. The moment capacity ratio is 0.81, so we can improve it a little bit if necessary. Also, there's a deficiency here for the development length. That means that the rebars that we are using, number six, so these rebars are coming down and, and the hook is not deep enough to develop the uh, full capacity of the rebar. So we can either increase the footing thickness or reduce the bar size. Let's try to reduce the bar size to number five instead of number six. Let's go back to the other glance. Now the development length ratio has been fixed. Now the ratio is 0.82, but the capacity is over by 11%. So we need to reduce the spacing of these rebars number fives. Let's say instead of five at 10, let's say five at nine, now the capacity is one a little bit in the borderline. Let's reduce even more. Let's say five at eight. Now the capacity ratio is 0.9, so it's perfect. Let's use number five at eight for the stem. And that's gonna be reflected graphically here. Number five at eight, just at the front face of the wall. Now let's go to the footing reinforcement. Go to the footing tab. To be consistent, let's use also number fives instead of number sixes. And also here, number fives. Let's see the capacities. The moment capacity is 0 0.56 for the toe and 0 0.37 for, for the heel. So we can increase the spacing, let's say to 12, 5 at 12, in both cases, and 5 at 12. So now it's 0 0.67. Since we reduced the thickness of the stem, we also reduced the weight of the wall. And now the friction is not enough to resist the sliding. Now the sliding safety factor is 0.49, very close to the limit, 1.50. If necessary, we can use the slab on grade at the bottom of the basement to resist the lateral restraint of the wall. Let's do that. For that purpose, let's go to the design criteria, then in conditions. Then in the first checkbox, wall is restrained against sliding. That means that the slab on grade is resisting the lateral movement of the wall. So the sliding is prevented. Click OK. Go to the overturning. This is the final uh, design. Overturning is not an issue because it's a restrained wall. Sliding, we saw that it's prevented. Bearing, we saw that the maximum bearing pressure is 3.9, which is less than the maximum allowable, 4.0, is acceptable. Then the stem, the moment diagram, and the shear diagram. The blue areas represent the capacity of the member. 
If necessary, we can increase the capacity by reducing the spacing of the stem rebars. In the footing tab, we can see the pressures that are applicable to the toe. And here we can see the controlling load combinations in flexor and shear for the heel. And finally, the construction tab. As you can see, it's very easy to design a basement concrete wall using as deep retain. We were able to model this real life example in just a few minutes, and we optimize the design very quickly. If we try to do this exercise by hand, it can take several hours and probably will not be completely optimized as we did here. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.